Hey friends, welcome back. We are planting our garden today. We're really starting it. Um, I showed you some footage of us picking out some things. So Millie and I, pro tip, uh, carry the baby on the back if you need to do gardening and you're worried about them getting into things. But Millie and I and the kids are going to be putting some compost and soil in these raised beds and we're gonna be direct sowing most of our plants. I can't wait any longer. Usually, fingers crossed for me, this works out, but we'll see. So this is what we're working with. We have the four beds here. I did put some garden pavers and we will be putting some mulch in between. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Tori. We are selling this house and moving back to our home state of rural Pennsylvania and we are looking for land or a farm because we would like to get this homestead dream started so if you like that kind of thing definitely hit the subscribe button we make this preparedness life on a budget and i feel like we're thriving we're doing a, a good job so we like to stay positive in this community again if you like that kind of thing definitely hit the subscribe button i promise we're a good time but look at that look at all that lilac so pretty uh, i'm gonna give you a little tour of things uh Honestly, within a week, things have really just perked up. So the goal is just to get these dirt, this dirt and compost in the beds. And then we want to do these. And these are garden boxes from the Dollar Tree. I got them when they were $1.25, so two years ago. And it's kind of like a hack to that, you know, viral planter that everyone seems to have. It's just out of my budget. So we want to make it look nice here, make the property look beautiful. Hopefully uh, the new owners, we don't know who they are, but hopefully they like homesteading and gardening. We have a chicken pen for them and everything. So yay, I'm excited to get started today. Let's go. Our wheelbarrow broke from a certain eager five-year-old, so we're going to carry these 10 bags back. Okay, that was the last bag. I did five bags, no, I did seven bags of our regular, no, I did six bags of topsoil, organic topsoil, and then I did four bags of compost because I feel like if I have, oh, she grabbed my hair. That's the only flaw of this plan. I feel like if uh, we do too much compost, it will be too much nitrogen. That could be a problem with some of our plants because we do have our own compost from the chickens and all of that. So I just don't want to put too much nitrogen in it. And I've been noticing in our water a uptick in chlorine. So I did a water test and I'm right. So I thought maybe my postpartum hormones had me smelling it differently, but I feel like there's something off with our water. So I don't know if anybody has an idea about a hose filter for that kind of thing. I don't even know if that exists, but I would like to have some filtered water for our water, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm going to get this dirt in the holes, in the beds, and then we're going to get going on planting. Okay. The baby carrying can only last a little bit because she is ready to move it, move it. Huh, girl? She is busy. She's my busiest child, believe it or not. Uh, but here we go. This is the tour. We have broccoli. We have greens. We have onions. Oh, I should probably get my shadow out of it. Broccoli, greens, onions, black rose. We have a little bit of field greens in here as well. I see you. I see you eyeing it up next to the lilac bush. So purred. Uh, and then this is the bed in question. I don't know if I'm going to fill this up today or not. Probably will take a lot more than what we got. And then here we have that raised bed that we were talking about. So I have to clean that out. Most of the chicken uh, bedding, fertilizer, whatever, is in there. And then that bed, the one I made that looks like garbage, but you know, it grows food. Uh, that one we need to fill up as well. And then again, in between here will be mulch. I'm super excited. I think the roses are going to look great. There's a few deads that I have to pick, uh, pick off there. Haven't, I'm out of breath from carrying those bags. Uh, and then our irises finally bloomed. If you're new here, my chickens, they took the top of that there. So I'm excited about the irises. Honeysuckle used to be here. My mother-in-law and I cut that back because there was so much dead on it, but I don't think it's coming back. So maybe we'll put something there. And then, hey you, I see you over there. She's ready. She's taking a few steps. If there's a cookie involved, huh girl? I want to obviously clean some of that area out. Pineapple sage is there. And then I thought about putting something here. And then over here, we have random sunflower poking up. Uh, not sure. I think this was spinach. And then my dahlia. It's clinging on to hope. So we'll do 
what we can. The cucumber died. Uh, kind of my fault. I left it out here when it was snowing. So we have chives here like you know about. No more throwing rocks. And then uh, yarrow here. We have chamomile here. Thistle and milkweed. And then some busy chickens. Ha, huh, ladies. This is Dolly, our head hen. She's the worst. Uh, Reba's up there. We got Patsy. We have Loretta after named after some pretty great people. We have Dixie over there. She's blind. And then we have some ducks as well. But Dolly and her posse has been really, really going after the new baby chick. So I don't know what to do about that. But again, we have things that need to be taken out of here. And I think that's just about it. Yes. She's really into these lilacs. We use lilacs uh, for syrups and teas and things like that, but they have a lot of great medicinal benefits, but they smell really great too. Huh? It's so beautiful to see her playing with this before we left for the hospital to have her last year. These were starting to bloom, so that's my timing. That's how I know when they're gonna come, right? I was so excited when we moved to the property because we saw this lilac bush and it never bloomed until year three. So that is, <laughs> I think, a sign, huh? You stepping on those rocks. Oh, goodness. All right, let's get started on this dirt. So I'm not layering it. I know I see a lot of people say that you have to do it that way, but I don't, I'm a firm believer that you don't have to do it in any way no reason to layer it. I'm just going to gently mix it with my rake here. So right now I have a bag of topsoil, bag of compost, and then I'm going to put another topsoil in here and hopefully that will help, but I might need to fill it a little more. I'm not sure yet. I just have to do that soil sample. So I will drop the soil samples that I use. Uh, I get mine on Amazon, but you can get them at a lot of different places. Okay, that's how far that dirt took us, but it did end up filling that bed up because it's a little short. And then uh, I don't feel like I need to go all the way up top with that one. And then we put a layer of compost in here. And then I think we'll just need probably seven and five to put seven bags of topsoil. Okay, I got cut off in that last clip, but I'll just need five more bags of the compost and then we will fill up that uh, larger bed and get going. So I just drew out a little, I guess, diagram of the front and back of our house and the garden boxes. So I was gonna show you what they are gonna look like and then I will list what we are planting. So we've made a very hard decision that we will not be planting a lot of produce this year. We will be planting mainly medicinals and flowers and some annuals and things like that just so we are able to take what we can when we move across the country. So I could easily take, you know, a harvest from some of these beds and dehydrate them or maybe the new owners don't want the garden beds, then we might have to take them apart and having you know a million pumpkins like we normally get or a bunch of zucchini is just going to be difficult so I have narrowed it down uh, we're going to start in the front here though we have the sidewalk and then we're going to have a bed on each side we're going to do eight by four by two foot uh two beds on each side pavers in between and then we're just going to do mulch just because we have so much stone out there I think we need to break it up a bit we got rid of our grass because it was silly to just keep watering it three times a day. It was just a waste of money and I really feel like a lot of lawns should be I mean, they can be maintained to each their own, but I feel like people should grow food and attract bees and bugs and things like that. But that's a story for another day. We are going to do on the outer beds, uh, snapdragons, chamomile, and valerian. I think I'll just switch the chamomile and the valerian. We're going to do lemon balm and calendula and lavender, and then the same on the other side. I think that will look really nice. And then maybe here we'll just do some big pots of a shrub or something like that. And then we talked 
talked about the rose trellis on one of my videos recently and I have this large uh, carpet rose bush that's creeping and I think it would be nice if it just trellis so we're gonna do a trellis there and then in the back where you just spent most of the video we do have the larger beds one two three four we have a greens bed and then here will just be celery and then we have our lilacs and we're gonna put mulch in between each thing here and then you did see the pavers and then in the back bed we do have echinacea and snapdragons and then I'm gonna add a third flower just not sure yet and then this side of the back will just be dedicated to our food that we plan to grow so I always came companion plant tomato and basil and that will go in one and then I always have potatoes and carrots uh, sometimes I companion plant greens and carrots and I like that but I think we're just going to do potatoes carrots and peppers and call it good that is mostly what we use we do have strawberry in this bed though so I will say that and then around here I'm just going to do potted plants of marigolds or calendula or something like that just to help with bugs and then right here I'm going to do some large kale um, plants and that's been really helpful with bugs uh, I mean at least for me because we don't like to spray and then here here are my medicinals that I plan to uh, plant this year and I really did narrow it down I know it seems like a big list but we use all of these so it's super important to me that these get in the ground first things first arnica we also have skull cap i think i'll just leave a list in the description for you if you have questions about any specific herb or flower plant that i am talking about just let me know i can just tell you what we use it for or how we use it or what the benefit is i i did not study any you know herbology or anything like that i am not an herbalist i'm also not a doctor so you just have to test these out on you some of these herbs are very powerful and i would not recommend you know having them in reach of children you just have to be very careful with that my kids are pretty trained and uh, amelia will be too so we'll keep an eye on her but i do have to make those disclaimers before people freak out anyways arnica skull cap passion flower fever fuel the cbd plants we're going to move on out of the basement calendula golden seal holy basil oregano we have comfrey we have, we'll just go up, uh, dill, rosemary, sage, St. John's wort, hyssop, hyssop, whatever you want to call it, bee balm, which is bergamot, we have meadowsweet, we have California poppy, we have uh, wisteria that snuck in there, that was just going to be a suggestion for the new owners, that would be really pretty trellised uh, with the roses, but uh, anyways, we have borage, borage, whatever you want to call that, we have wild yam, red raspberry leaf, and Solomon seal, and that is it. I'm sure I might plant some more depending on what I have. I might even put some more valerian and lemon balm back here, but I'm just going to do rows of them. I don't really have a method to my madness when it comes to companion planting, but each variety, you know, could look different. So sometimes I try and stick with different colors, but that is the plan. I, I feel like it's taken us a while to get here, but I'm excited. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let me know what kind of content you want to see if you enjoyed this gardening uh, content or if you want to see more food because I can do both. I think on this channel I will just be opening up more about our homesteading and preparedness journey and not really niching down. So I hope that's okay with everybody. I know you all enjoy a variety of videos from me. Again, if you have any questions here, let me know and I will catch you on the next one. Stay adventurous, stay creative. Bye y'all. Let it all go